Hi, this is Brian Rousseau with Architectural Record at the 2007 Innovation Conference. We're speaking with Sir Nicholas Grimshaw, founder and chairman of Grimshaw Architects, and also, not incidentally, the president of the Royal Academy of Arts. Welcome, Sir Nicholas. You're, you're speaking today about collective, how collective memory is embedded in your architecture. Can you talk about how the designs you're doing today are both radically different from and also somehow connected to buildings from 19th, the 19th century? Well, I think it's very important for um, a firm to have a tail going back, to have roots in a way. Um, and it's partly uh, what uh, we ourselves have done, partly what uh, we, we've looked up some of what our relatives and people have done. Both your great-grandfathers. Yeah, were that's right. And we've also, um, we, we also have, uh, if you like, figures in the past we strongly respect. So, like Brunel or mm -hmm. Paxton, who sort of um, uh, give us heroes and anchors in, in the firm, if you like, mm -hmm. and, and 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 we then have these threads which which we like to carry forward, and and uh, and try to make sure that our, our buildings all do relate in some way. When you look to the future, what are you most worried about for the future of the ar of ar the architect profession, and also what are you most optimistic about? Well, let's, let's do the optimism first. Okay. I, I think um, the uh, buildings are going to become sustainable now by default. Mm -hmm. It's not a choice anymore, right. I don't think. I think uh, it, you will not be able to put up uh, wasteful and uh, unsustainable projects. So the interesting thing is how this is going to manifest itself in architecture how you're going to see these effects coming out properly designed, shaded buildings using sustainable materials and so on. So in a sense, you could say uh, there's, there's a new generation of buildings in the offing, um, which are not going to be just you know, uh, conditioned by style, as mm -hmm. s quite a lot is now, right. but are going to be buildings of real substance. And the fear? Well, I mean, the fear is, in, in, in a sense, I think all that is rather wonderful. But the fear is, of course, that if, if uh, people uh, um, um, discover ab abundant sources of energy and uh, materials, then they'll carry on in exactly the same wasteful and hopeless way they did before. <laughs> <laughs> You've said you like talking about your design philosophy. If you had to distill the essence of your architectural vision into a few sentences, what would you say? Well, I would say buildings should do what they're designed to do. They should be uh, sustainable. That should be, uh, you should see that in them. Um, I think they should be liked by their occupants mm -hmm. and not uh, um, sort of sworn at <laughs> by their occupants, even though uh, uh, they may be considered to be good architecture from the, from the outside world point right. of view. And I think the occupants ought to be able to manipulate them and make them work for them. And is the Eden Project, would you say that's uh, the, the project you feel most proud of right now, and or, and, and or is that the one that you think you'll be most remembered for as an architect? Uh, well, I, I don't know about r remembered. Um, pe pe I think it's very dangerous for architects to go around trying to do memorable buildings. In fact, um, I, I wouldn't recommend it at all. I think the, um, if a building's memorable, it is because it is liked and it really works, and people want to keep it. Uh, anything can disappear overnight in, 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 in the day we live in. Um, and these days, I think buildings will only last if, if uh, they're useful and if people like them. You're also the president of the Royal Academy of Arts, one of the most popular cultural institutions in the UK. What have you learned during your tenure from that, and what can architects in general learn from visual artists? Uh, it, it, it's been an opening up of, of access to different uh, parts of the sort of cultural world. I think that's the main thing. I don't think it's an absolutely direct um, link, um, you know, that we try to, to stick uh, sculptures on the outside of our buildings or all of a sudden or anything like that. Um, but I think it engenders a, a, a general feeling of, of, of um, more sympathy for the arts. And perhaps architecture isn't thought about enough as an art. It's, 
it's 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 thought about as a very practical um, and functional and cost related thing very often and uh, architects and everybody actually feels very wary of talking about beauty for instance mm -hmm. even saying a building is beautiful is, um, is, 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 is a pretty risque thing to do these days. How will all the architectural technology and, and the new tools that architects have, how will they ultimately positively impact a building owner's bottom line and the occupants of buildings? Are we going to see much more cost-effective building procedures, buildings where employees are more productive and, and happier? What, what is going to be the end impact of all these wonderful new toys that architects have to develop outstanding buildings with? What I, I think is interesting that's happening is, is that clients are getting a lot more thoughtful and a lot more intelligent mm -hmm. about what they want and they're starting to ask the right questions um, and I think uh, uh, architects th therefore are sort of under some degree of challenge to come up with the goods if you like much more so than perhaps times in the past where um, you know the people have just waited for them to produce something and then criticize it. I think the the brief writing or program writing as you call it in the States mm -hmm. is getting much tougher and much more challenging, much more interesting really. Um, and things like sustainability and, and low energy use are coming into those programs which, which uh, is, is a very interesting factor. What's the best building that you've ever been on the inside of? I think I would probably have to quote the Pompidou Centre, really. Um, well, even though uh, you know Richard Rogers is quite a good friend of mine, I, I just think it was so innovatory in its time, so interesting. It really threw down the gauntlet uh, those many years ago, and it's it's still as relevant. Um, talking about people buildings lasting because people want them, mm -hmm. you know, it's still a popular building. It's still um, uh, it's been completely uh, renovated and uh, uh, generally painted up and improved lately. Uh, and it, it, it's, it's a wonderful piece of the infrastructure of Paris. I think a, a huge achievement that was. And, and lastly, what's your favorite city for architecture in the world? Very difficult. Uh, I, 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 I would probably say um, New York and Chicago tied <laughs> <laughs> because uh, uh, Chicago has some wonderful buildings, but it also has some big blanks mm -hmm. in it. Um, New York holds together better, perhaps because it's on an island. Um, and and it, it, talking about renewing itself, um, I think it does a wonderful job uh, of, of, of um, continually renewing itself, but also these days, too, which is very interesting, um, uh, uh, reusing buildings some office buildings being converted into residential mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. I've, I find that very, you know, very interesting. This has been Bryant Rousseau with Architectural Record at the 2007 Innovation Conference speaking with Sir Nicholas Grimshaw, Chairman and Founder of Grimshaw Architects.